As we get started today, we're going to have our parent-child dedications, and this is a special time. Sometimes through Mother's Day, Father's Day, uh, we got families in each of our services today. I got three today. I'm going to ask them if they're in the room right now. They should be. I think I saw them all. Nobody ran off. I'm going to ask them to come on up. Matthew and Elizabeth Betts are bringing Hadley, Grace, and Justin and Karen uh, Hartling is bringing Jack Emery, and Stephen and Brittany are bringing Sophia. Guys, help me welcome them to the stage, will you? However you guys want, I say, <laughs> there's a lot of wires over there. This is a special time for us because this is not something, guys, please come on up and watch your step. Got it? Hey. All right. I want to make sure I say all the names right. Hadley. <laughs> so two syllables or three in that word? Well, Hadley, I'm sorry. It's two. All right, I want to make sure, Hadley, Hadley, I want to make sure I get it right. This is an important time uh, for us because this is not just some service we walk through. Uh, this is where moms and dads have been processing together their role in the lives of these children. And so they've been watching videos, they've been in the scriptures, and it's been an important time. So there are the, decisions that they're making. I just want to kind of share with you some of the things that they're deciding to do. They're dedicating their family to the Lord, not just a child. It's the whole family unit. Uh, they're committing, them, committing themselves to teach their kids or their child Uh, The commands and promises of God's word so that their children will have the knowledge by which one day to begin that faith walk with the Lord. And then they're committing themselves to live a lifestyle. It's one thing to say, yeah, I'll take you to church once in a while, but to live it in their presence. And so they've been thinking this through. They have things they want to share with you. There's a life verse that they've chosen out of the scripture. They've also chosen some words uh, to kind of define uh, their children, how they want to see them as they grow up. So they're going to share them individually, and then I'm going to let, ask them, do you guys want to come and join us up here at the bets? Guys, what a blessing to have you guys here. Got this? Yeah. All right. So the life verse we chose is uh, Psalm 25.5, and it says, Lead me by your truth oh. and teach me, for you are the God who saves me. All day long I put my hope in you. There you go. We good. <laughs> that was my mistake. Um, so Psalm 25, 5, I'll read it again real quick. It says, lead me by your truth and teach me, for you are the God who saves me. All day long I put my hope in you. Um, Elizabeth and I, we were raised to love the Lord with all our heart. And uh, we strive to live our life in such a way that shows Christ to Hadley. And uh, the support we have from our family, uh, grandparents, great-grandparents, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews. Um, Do they have some, oh, some of them here oh, today? The- <laughs> guys, would you guys stand for just a moment? This is, that, this is that ethos. This is that extended family. Wow. And this, the beautiful thing, it goes, so, it goes so much further than that. It goes to this church family. And the support we have from this church family is just overwhelming. Um, and we just want to thank you for that. But uh, we just see Hadley as a blessing. We want to bless Hadley before the Lord and, and dedicate her to the Lord. Um, and the words that we're praying over her is loving, faithful, caring, joyful, and selfless. And uh, we're just really praying that Hadley has a personality that, that shows her faith to the Lord and that uh, just really, really shines bright for the Lord. That's a praise. God bless you, Hadley. Hey, guys, come on. Let's let the others come up. Justin and Karen, we're going to bless them all at the same time. I'm proud of you. So uh, we're the Hartlings. I'm Justin. This is Jack. And it's my wife, Karen. Okay, we, we divided this up. Um, we're dedicating Jack because we understand the importance of having a close relationship with our Lord and Savior. We also want to, you want to say something? <laughs> was it so bright? You said so bright. <laughs> He's so bright. Um, we also want to raise him in a community of like-minded people who will help us foster that relationship as Jack develops with Jesus. So being the spiritual leader means being a servant leader who imitates Jesus. A spiritual leader is attuned to the family's needs and looks for opportunities to help its members grow their relationship with God by, supporting, by providing support, grace, and encouragement. Um, our life verse, um, I have to say, I feel like I've been praying this over him since before he was born. Um, it's Joshua 1.9. Have, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. <clears throat> and our words that we hope, Jack, to be is virtuous, honorable, respectable, and kind. That's exactly what we'll pray over Jack here in a few moments. And guys, thank you for sharing that. And can we give a shout out? To What's our that? Family, Is the family here? That's right. Forgive and me. And our friends and our small group. Guys, if you're all, here today, please stand to celebrate with them. <laughs> no, I'm glad you did. Thank you, guys. It truly is that family. What's that taste of <laughs> Guys, please. Oh, bring it down. 
introduce yourselves once again. Uh, we're the Smiths. Uh, I'm Steven. This is my wife, Brittany. And we have Sophia. <laughs> Sophia's like... <laughs> um, we, just, we chose to dedicate um, her in, to God in front of the church and our family um, because we want to fulfill our role as parents so that our, our kids will know God and hopefully come to know or come to accept him and have a personal relationship with him. Um, and the life verse we chose was Matthew 20, 22, 37. It says, Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Uh, and we chose forgiving, obedient, and loving for Sophia. I praise God for the guys. Thank you. Do you have family here uh, sometimes? Yes. <laughs> guys, please, for just a moment, would you stand with us? That is so awesome. Man. All right, so thank you guys. Just, I, look at the precious kids. I can't put it. We didn't have them all on the screen at the same time. Just, just take a minute. Look at those children. If you remember those verses, you remember those words, pray those over them. Just in your spirit for a moment when you look at them. Remember, these are commitments that moms and dads are making. Decisions that will really become actions day in and day out for the rest of your life. Not just to the turn 18. We're learning that now. For the rest of your life. And that's something we want to pray over you guys because it's not only decisions you're making, it's a church family as well. Because church family, I'm asking you. Now I know that not everyone knows all these individuals up here, but I asked the church family, if you believe this, I'm not asking you to say yes. If you, you don't know them, say, I can't really promise them to do this. But if you believe this, I encourage you to say it loud that I will. Will you pray and walk alongside these families? Anyone? Will you do all that's in your power to assist each of these children to come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior? They guys think about this. From preschool to elementary to surge to revolution to young adult ministry, all those in this room that are or will be in those days ahead helping to teach and to mentor and shepherd, those are the ones you're helping to make a commitment to. And to moms and dads who are saying, we're going to do everything we can to create the best environment possible for these precious children. So if you would, if you would do with me for a minute, I'm going to ask you to remain seated while we pray. I want to come together and I want to pray for Hadley, Jack, and Sophia. Can we do that? Let's pray together. God, this is such a precious time. Lord, to see moms and dads committing themselves to you, Lord. To you because not every... Lord, not every season is going to be easy moving forward. But Lord, just kind of like the songs we were singing, Lord, the anchor is hidden in the veil. And Lord, these moms and dads are committing themselves to you so that no matter what challenges or circumstances or even the joys and the triumphs of head, they are anchored well in you. So Father God, today we pray for Hadley. We pray for Jack. We pray for Sophia. God, you bless these children with the exact family you wanted them to be with. Together, these husbands and wives, moms and dads, stand before you to commit themselves, Lord, wholeheartedly to loving one another, loving you, loving one another, and loving their children. Father, we pray, Lord God, for Hadley. We pray for Jack and Sophia, that in the days to come, Father God, in the months and years, though they will continue to learn and be exposed to the truths of your word. And Lord, that will come that day Lord God, when they would surrender their hearts to you and call your son Savior and Lord. God, we thank you for this time and what a blessing it is to have these precious families and their support system here. And we give you thanks, Lord, and all of God's people said, amen. amen. Now for these precious families we have, I'll just have, bring one up, up here. We have a certificate that we make for the family. We also have a letter that comes from me and then I, and I write on the bottom of it. For each of the children, because here's, I don't know where these families are going to be a year from now, much less 12 years from now. But at the age of 13, we say, if a child has not made a commitment to Christ, then I encourage you to put this letter in a very safe place. We leave it unsealed so you can read it first and put it in a safe place that when that child gives their life to Jesus Christ, give it to them. So this is what decision we made that day. Or if at 13 years of age, they have it and say, hey, I want you to have something. We, we were involved in something years ago 
And the pastor who officiated that had a letter he wrote to you. I want you to read it now. And that's for them. And then the book is for the two of you, written by John Trent, called The Blessing, Giving the Gift of Unconditional Love and Acceptance. That's not only for husbands and wives. That's the unconditional love for these precious creations of God that you hold in your hands right now. And so these guys are for you. Math, Elizabeth, this is for you. John, Karen, Justin, excuse me. Came remote writing. Guys, thank you guys for taking the commit, making the commitment to do this because this is not just, it's not easy. It takes time to be in the word. May I encourage you to do something with those life verses. Write them down, stencil them, put, in a, put them in a, a print or a, 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 put, them on a, put them somewhere where those children can see it and you can keep quoting it to them as often as possible, okay? Guys, you celebrate with these families today? <laughs> guys, thank you today. I'll take this. Uh, but I'm just going to bring up by themselves David and Ashton Scott. Where are they this morning? They're in the back. Guys, come and help me welcome them. Oh, yeah. Just be careful. Got it. There you go. I'm always excited because I like when moms and dads either or both share. So they're going to, and they're going to share their life first that they've picked, and they're going to pick some of those words. And that's an awesome picture. <laughs> so as uh, Pastor Mark you know said, what? I'm Dave. Step closer. Mark. Nope, I just didn't have it on. Sorry. I'm, I'm David Scott. This is my wife, Ashton. And Ashton and I consider ourselves to be very, very blessed people. But the greatest blessing either of us ever received was about nine weeks ago when we received this healthy baby boy. His name is Graham. And... With the birth of Graham came a lot of responsibility. The most significant responsibility of all of those is to raise Graham in a way that honors God and provides him with the spiritual foundation that he'll need to one day have the opportunity to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, Ash and I both agree that raising Graham with God in his life every single day is the most important thing that we'll ever do. And we're here today to commit to doing that publicly in front of you. So the life verse that we chose for Graham is Joshua 1, 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And we've also put together our adjectives. And for Graham, our expectation is that he'll be prayerful, mm -hmm. discerning, faithful, courageous, and grateful. Amen to that. We also have a family support system. Some of you may not know. Jeff and Susie Kessner, grandma and granddad. Or you have some other words, you can ask them later, about what they're called from Uganda. Uh, very excited for you guys. They're making commitments, and you've done a great job of explaining the commitment you guys are making as, as husband, wife, mother, and father to create an environment for Graham to come to know Jesus Christ personally as Lord and Savior. And that is a commitment. Now, there's also a commitment on the church side. Now, not everyone knows this couple. Not everyone teaches in preschool ministry or an elementary ministry or surge one day or revolution. But you might, and he may be there. Think about it. Think about revolution right now. He eventually will get there. He's going to be a teenager, right? It's going to happen, whether we want to or not. It's going to happen. Look at him. Look it up. Really? What's teenager? <laughs> he likes it already. But one of the things we ask for the church to contemplate, I want to read these first, and then if you affirm these, I encourage you to say so by saying, yes, we will. Will you pray and walk alongside this family? And will you do all that's in your power to assist this precious child in coming to know Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior? Is that your commitment to this family? Okay, what I want to do is I want you to read, because I want to pray over you, and I want to pray over your precious child. I want you to read those adjectives one more time. Sure. Okay, because that, that first one caught me. Remember what it was? Anybody? Prayerful. Prayerful. I was like, wow. I might be the first time I've ever heard that adjective used in a service. Sure. So all five. Prayerful, discerning, faithful, courageous, and grateful. Guys, right now, would you join with me in prayer as we pray over Graham?
Gracious God, we just thank you for Graham's precious life. And God, we're believing, Lord God, that he will be prayerful and discerning. And Lord, just that child that seeks after your heart. God, just like we pray for every child, that there will come that day where Graham will bow and surrender his life to Jesus Christ, your son, and he will call Jesus Lord. For he will know in his own life, he will be desperately need rescue and will call out to your son for salvation. God, we pray for David. We pray for Ashton. We ask your blessing and favor upon their marriage and upon their home. That God, that they would not only make these commitments publicly, but God, give them the power and the strength to live them out privately so that Graham can see them actually lived out in action in his home. God, we just ask your favor and blessing. Lord, believing some of us will be around to Lord, that day will come when Graham would bow his knee to you. And Lord, we have a theme of expectation this year, so we pray that in a spirit of expectation, doing all that we can do, believing that you have done all that you said you would do and will do. And we give you thanks for this family in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. 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 Now before you leave, we have for you, we create a certificate for your family that has the life verse on it and the picture, that cutie right there. And then we have a letter. And what I like to do with this when I write these letters, we never know where you're going to be a year from now, much less 13 years from now. We never know when God is going to grab the heart of this precious child and transform for all eternity. And so I write a letter. I, tell, I keep it unsealed so you can read it. And, but this is for him, written to him from me. Because one day at the age of 13 or whenever the, he gives his life to Christ, give it to him. But by the age of 13, he still doesn't quite know what he believes. I want you to hand this letter to him. So this is from the pastor, the day that we committed you and ourselves to him. And I want him, this is written to him from me. And I pray that it blesses his life and continues to push him in the right direction. As well as for you guys, the book, The Blessing, written by John Trent, giving the gift of unconditional love and acceptance will help the two of you guys take a step of this action and turn it into a decision and turn it into actions in the coming years. We're so proud of you guys. God bless you. Thank you. Here you go. Guys, help me celebrate with them. God bless you guys. I'm going to ask David and Tracy Cooper to come up. Uh, this is different. This is something we've never done before. I actually wasn't even quite sure how to handle it. And my wife's really smart. And uh, so she, she educated me. I said, yes, absolutely. David and Tracy are bringing with them Mara, actually the full name, Rosalie. No, sorry, looking in the wrong place. That's the next service. Um, Tamara, Mara Lynn Stewart. And they're also bringing Andrew and Raylan. And they are fostering children right now. Praise God for that. Amen. Yeah. But, and I'm, I'm going to have them if they can. You can do this. I don't care if the tears roll or not. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because of their heart. Why am I doing this? And so let me just turn to them and say, why are you standing here with these precious, precious children and saying, it's a dedication. It's a parent child. You're living in the land of uncertainty because you don't know when, where they come from. And many times you don't know where the children are ultimately going to go. But in this season right now, you have an opportunity. So if either one of you want it, <laughs> if not, they wrote an email to me. I'll pull it up on my phone and read it. Well, you have to get close. Uh, <laughs> come on, coach. All right. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so um, we have four biological children of our own, ranging from uh, 29 to 21 to 20, almost 20, and uh, 12. So back in uh, 2012, we started... Uh, with um, getting foreign exchange students. Uh, we started with uh, two Japanese students for two weeks. And then we quickly, the next month, went into a uh, Swedish exchange student for nine months. And we felt that that was the opportunity to show our kids uh, different cultures. And uh, what we wanted to do after those experiences was um, give kids that are less fortunate uh, an opportunity to be loved and supported. So 
We embarked on that in 2012. Uh, we had a little delay between the exchange students and starting the fostering program. We've been doing it now for about a year. Um, this is this is our. We had one previous, and uh, for only a month, and then we got Mara oh. in uh, December. Isn't she cute? <laughs> Man, just dripping with cuteness. And, She's dripping. <laughs> and she was she was a week old. We. No. Well, we got her at birth, but um, we were sitting in the hospital with her um, and uh, showing her all kinds of love. Um, and then these two precious ones came to us in February. And yeah. <laughs> so the reason why we do it, we put, we put our selfishness aside and, you know, we have our kids that are, that are grown and uh, still... 12 years old, still growing, but again, we're showing them that, you know, every child needs love. So, we just... <laughs> All right. I wanted to take the time, like I said, this has never been asked of us before. It's a beautiful thing. And I pray that this maybe stimulates others to do the same. I want to pray over Mara and Andrew and Raylan. But before I do, I want to encourage you. Now, I'm going to see if I can do this in 30 seconds. Those kids are me. I was adopted. I was in two foster homes before five months of age. And last year when I got my packet from the social workers from the 60s, one of the social workers wrote in 1969 that the second family that had me said, and he really loves church. They took me, just like you. They took me to church. I thank God for what you're doing, because you have no idea the investment you make now and the seeds that you plant, what God will do with them in the years to come. God bless your faithfulness. Guys, would you help me pray for Mara, Andrew, and Raylan? Can we do it? Gracious God, what a privilege it is to stand here with David and Tracy and really that family that works with them to love on these kids. God, you created Mara. She is not an accident. The same with Andrew and Raylan. These are precious children of you, our most high God. You have plans for them. You have made provisions for them. Lord, you have a destiny for them, Lord God, that would blow their minds if they could see it today. I thank you for David and Tracy. As he said so beautifully, setting aside selfishness to create an environment, Lord God, where these children, Lord, for the season they have them, can be planted within their lives the truths that one day you said, Lord, your word would not come back void. Father, I'm believing the same thing over Mara and Andrew and Raylan that you did in my life. Father, Lord God, if it's not, this is not their final landing spot, Lord, that the families into which you will entrust them, Father God, would be godly, Christ-fearing, Christ-loving moms and dads who will love them and encourage them and continue to point them in the right direction. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. Lord, bless, the Bible says blessing upon blessing. I pray that over David, and I especially pray that over Tracy. She's got her hands full. But Lord, I see the joy in her heart. And Lord, I pray, Lord, for their extended family, Lord God, to come alongside them and the church family that will come alongside them as well. We thank you for this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Guys, help me celebrate them. Will you? Now, we had the book. We'll, we'll do something different afterwards. We only had the letter. This is not probably going to work exactly the same, but you may before you before a transition happens and they go somewhere else. I don't know how that would work with social workers or any of that, but you might say, this is something that was prayed over. You might want to give that to the adoptive family. You know, I don't know if that'll work or not, but be bold and see what happens. We actually do uh, we create a life book, a life book for the kids to take with them. Oh, sweet. And so this, this definitely will go. It's a whole different era than the 60s, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, we, I just wanted to say that uh, our church family has been awesome. Our life group has been awesome for the support, uh, softball team. Uh, <laughs> it really has been a blessing. This church has been a blessing. 
God bless you guys. Truly, be careful going down. I'm going to ask Jack and Stephanie Lynch if they would come on up and bring Rosalie Marie with them and Kevin and Laura. Guys, come on up and bring Aiden Joseph with you. Guys, help me welcome them. <laughs> this is always so awesome. Be careful coming up. It's not a normal step. Got it? Okay, I'm going to get out of the way and let you guys get in the light. <laughs> okay. It is bright. Yes, it is. That's why most people like to go further back. Look at that. Look at these cuties. I mean, unbelievable. Gifts from the Lord. Now, as I said, they are making commitments, but before they speak, they're dedicating themselves, not just their child, because this is like, it goes both together. You can't just like, okay, God, take my kid, I'll live however I want. It doesn't work that way. It's an environment they're willing to create. They're making a commitment to teach their kids the promises and commands of God's word so that the children will have the knowledge by which to make that commitment to Christ one day and continue to grow in it. And then the biggest one, as we've already been walking through this and Tara's had a chance to talk to them, they're committing themselves to live a godly lifestyle outside of Sunday morning. You know what I mean by that, right? It's one thing to preach it. It's another thing to live it, to create the environment where how you live at home actually reemphasizes the words that you speak to them from God's word and the words that teachers here in the ministry teach to you. So these guys are going to come up. Jack, Stephanie, if you guys want to go first, you know, why not? Come on up. Introduce yourselves, this precious little one. So this is Rosalie and Stephanie. I'm Jack. Um, she will be how old now? Nine months? This ten. Ten, ten this month. Um, Rosalie is actually our third baby, but the verse that we chose for Rosalie is Joshua 1.9. Uh, be or have I not commanded you, be strong, be courageous. Do not be discouraged and do not be afraid, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Amen. And we picked a couple words um, to help guide her and to focus our efforts in teaching her and everything um, that we wanted to instill in her. Um, so those were honesty, respect, compassion, joy, and patience. Wow. <laughs> you guys, look at Rosalie. That's something we... Say those words one more time. I just want to... I want to hear them. Honesty, respect, compassion, joy, and patience. Wow. Maybe you should have said stillness. Stillness, but. too. <laughs> you might add a few more. What I love about them. Remember, these are words that they write down. These are words that they'll keep in front of her. Really probably keep in their own minds, too. Because these kind of words of expectation. That's okay. Leave it on now. I'll, I'll eat it later. There you go. That's okay. <laughs> these are words of expectation. We're believing these over our children. They're they're believing them over their precious daughter and asking, how can we live? What do we teach to bring these to reality? So guys, thank you for coming and sharing those. I'll, I'll do it. I'm going to pray over her in just a minute. All right. I want them to come up and share as well. Kevin, Laura, who's speaking? I'm speaking. All right. <laughs> so, all right. So we have uh, two life verses we've chosen for AJ, or Aiden, sorry. Isaiah 6, 8 said, then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. Amen. And Psalms 139, 9 through 11. If I raise the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. And the words we've chosen for AJ are... <laughs> He beat you to it. Yeah. <laughs> I know my words, Pop. I got this. Uh, we want him to be courageous, faithful, something I personally need to work on, patience, <laughs> and we want him to be compassionate. Fantastic. Wow. I love the process because you think, wow, it's so fast up here. The beauty for me is that what husband and wife get to do together in preparation for this moment where they're verbalizing commitments they've had to make to you. We're going to say this on the stage. It's going to be on the certificates. These are things we committed to. And now they're going to need your help to make it happen. So first of all, I don't know if they're family. You guys got family. For both of them, if they're family of these two couples up here, of these two families, please stand for just a moment. Come on. I know they're out here. I see them. There they are. Fantastic. What I'm saying, this is part of their support system, okay? Guys, you may be seated. Thank you. But that's not their only support system. It's the church as well. As I said in the first or the second service, think about it. Right now, we see precious. We see innocence. And it's beautiful. And they grow up. Okay? Amen. Amen. <laughs> they do. And so this is not just a decision today. 
This is a commitment of families to discipleship. And it's a commitment of parents and people in the church to come alongside them. So one day, these two precious ones, they're going to be in preschool. They're going to be in MVCC Kids. Guess what? One day, they're going to be in middle school surge. Some of you are going to be teaching. Well, I heard a shoo up here. I thought, one day, they're going to be in revolution youth ministry. They will be teenagers eventually. Right? So I'm asking just a couple of questions. Will you as a church family... Now, if this is not, you don't know them, don't say it out loud. But if you know them, you say it and verbalize it because they need to hear it. Will you commit to pray and walk alongside these families? I will. And that's a phrase. And will you do all that you can in your power, which I don't know, whatever ministry you're involved in, to assist this, these children to grow, to come to Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior? Is anybody here who says they'll do that? Yeah, I will. That's a commitment. The, guys, you have a support system here in the church. They want to do that for us. So right now, I want to pray over these precious ones. And they've done great. She's doing fine. <laughs> doing fine. Of course, I'm not the mom. I'm not freaking out like they did. But I want to take the time to pray for Rosalie. I'd like to hear AJ. That's cool. But I will call Aiden Joseph for today. Okay? Guys, would you pray with me with these, for these precious children? Really, God, these are prayers for these families. Because you have gifted them with children. And the ability to have children. And with that comes tremendous responsibility. We know that from scripture, Lord. So Lord, I pray, Lord God, for Jack. And I pray for Stephanie. And I pray for Kevin. And I pray for Laura. That God, they will press in first to you. Then to each other. And God, then to Rosalie and Aiden. And in that order, Lord God, for anything out of that order, Lord, just creates chaos and confusion and hurt. God, they're desperate in need of you. God, Lord, there's going to come times in these precious children's lives where things are going to get tough. Things are going to be challenging. Just like the song that we just sang, Lord, I pray, Father, that they know you personally. That they come to a place where they have a personal relationship with you. That as the song said, they can, the anchor will hold within the veil. Even though the circumstances around them are difficult. Father, we pray for these blessed children. That they will grow up, Father God, to know you, but also to grow in you. That one day they too will be committed to raising their children, if you give them the children, to know the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for their family and support system in this church that comes alongside them. And thank you for the body of Christ to support the way we're called to support. We just thank you for this blessed opportunity in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, guys, don't go anywhere yet because I have these for you. Jim's down here. For those of you who haven't been to our parent-child dedications before, let me come over here, it's easier. Kevin and Laura, these are for you. These are for you. What we have, some of you are already aware, we create a certificate. Haven't got the DVD yet because we're creating that after today. But we have a certificate. It has the life verse on it. I would encourage you somewhere, write those words in. Even if you take that certificate and turn it over, you know, on the back of it, so you keep them somewhere. Remember what they were. But also have a letter. The letter's important to me because I don't have any idea where these families, you guys are going to be a year from now. Much less when they turn a teenager. So if these precious little ones have come to faith in Jesus Christ anywhere between now and the time they turn 13, put that letter in a safe place. We kept it unsealed so you can read it. And then keep it in a safe place. If they give the hearts of Christ, 8, 9, 10, give it to them. But for the age of 13, they're still wrestling with faith. And it could happen. I'd encourage you to, wherever you're at, pull that out and say, there was a day your mom and I stood on the stage before the Lord. We made a commitment. Not to decision. A commitment to discipleship, to raise you the way God asks us to. This is the commitments we made, and this is from the pastor who led that. And that was written to them from me. The book is for you to help make that commitment you're making today a reality, because it's great to say words, but it's hard sometimes to turn these words of vision into reality. And that's a gift from the church to you guys. God bless you guys. Thank you for doing this today. Guys, help me celebrate with them. I'm very proud. Look, they're like, yay! <laughs> Truly, God bless you guys. You guys can go.